there seems to be this idea in alternative medicine that you see in California a lot, that whenever people get sick or they get a serious illness like cancer and they survive, they beat the odds, for some reason you always tend to hear things like fasting is what did it or green juice is what did it or more often some extreme dietary change is what did it. Now I thought having heard this before from other people that this would be a very very important topic for this video on why I do not think food will cure most illnesses and why this is a very very important thing to discuss. Hey guys, Dr. Hein, doctor of Chinese medicine. Now a very important question or a very important statement actually will follow the question after. Going back thousands of years of Chinese medical history, there's always been a distinction between what is considered food grade medicine and what is considered medical grade medicine. And a very important book that talks about this distinction is called the Shen Nong Ben Cao Jing. This book goes back several thousand years and it classifies medicinals, if I can say that, into various categories. Now it breaks them down into three main categories. The first is the upper level medicinals. The second is the middle level medicinals and the third is the lower level medicinals. Now these are categorized for a very important reason. Number one, they're categorized based on their strength and the safety. Upper level medicinals have low toxicity. They can be taken for a long time. They don't have a lot of side effects. Lower level medicinals have a strong effect on physiology, meaning they can treat serious illnesses, but they're really not safe to take long term because they can have side effects and a lot of them have a certain degree of toxicity but that toxicity, in other words, like an alkaloid in the plant, is used to treat an illness. What's very, very important is that we have these three grades, and throughout Chinese medical history, people have mentioned things like, this is a food grade medicinal, or medical grade, right? But the distinction between what's food grade and what is used as a medicine is very, very important. And the fact that this book, going back thousands of years, distinguishes between this is a lower level medicinal meaning it's very strong and is required to treat serious illness versus an upper level medicinal which is a higher safety profile but which may not necessarily be able to treat illnesses or serious illness and food is often in that upper or middle grade medicinal category now why is that important number one the most important thing is because if food were enough to cure and treat illnesses why would medicine even exist now let's talk about something else. Let's give the example of ulcerative colitis. I've seen patients where they are having 10, 15, 20 bloody bowel movements with pus per day, and they can only eat two foods, you know, rice and maybe some kind of meat, like fish or chicken. That's all they can eat. Now, a person like this, even with a really, really strict paleo diet, like I've seen people manage-ish their symptoms, with a very strict paleo diet, no starches, no carbs, or specific carbohydrate diet. But what inevitably happens is that they're doing great for a while, and then something causes them to flare. And at that point, food is not strong enough at all to treat that flare. And most often, they'll end up getting prednisone or something like that from their physician to calm the flare, and then they can go back to their food grade therapy. The problem is that I have not seen anything besides Chinese formulas that are strong enough to manage that acute flare. That's the reason why prednisone, for example, is given that, a strong immunosuppressant is given for that pattern when there's this acute flare up. If food was enough to do that, then I think somebody would have figured that out by now. I'm sharing this not to discourage people, but just to be evidence-based that if I really saw the evidence that food could treat all serious diseases, you know, these, these stories of people going on these crazy fasts or the Gerson, I think the Gerson therapy, these high doses of fruits and vegetables. If I thought that were really the thing that worked, I would recommend it. But I don't think that's the thing that worked because I think that there are, based on thousands of years of evidence and based on the obvious clinical evidence, there are stages and grades of illness and there are stages and grades of interventions and therapies. You know, some people call this the therapeutic order. You know, you intervene with low-level interventions before going to surgery, obviously. That's really important to know because I think a lot of people run around thinking that green juice is gonna cure every problem and I don't just don't see the evidence of that. And so it's important, having been a sick person now multiple times, knowing what it's like and knowing what it's like to feel disappointed by both conventional medicine and alternative medicine. I think it's really important to be realistic about what is needed to treat serious illnesses. And I think for a lot of them, food is not enough. Maybe for some, maybe even pretty serious diabetes could reverse with 
uh, you know, you can have good clinical results with diet, all right? You can change those symptoms dramatically for other patterns as well. But I think understanding that some interventions are food grade, some are medical grade, and within Chinese medicine, we have formulas that are considered more food grade and herbs that are more food grade versus more medical grade. Only at this stage in depth, this strength formula will treat serious illnesses. So the good news is that I find that Chinese formulas encompass all those areas of the spectrum. Both food grade, you can take a low dosage or more conservative formula over time, let's say for digestive problems, or you can ramp up to something that is very, very strong for an acute ulcerative colitis or an acute autoimmune flare to help manage those symptoms. And it's important to know when to differentiate between the two. And that's because Chinese medicine has always been a primary care form of medicine for thousands of years. Everything from chronic illness to the acute hospital system was Chinese medicine back in the day, whenever that day was. And so there is a very refined and sophisticated way to understand, is this a food grade problem or is this a medical grade problem? And knowing when to use what. So I thought I would share that because, you know, I see living in California for the first time, how often the distinction between what people believe will heal an illness and what really does in my experience is there's often a big rift there. And so I would, thought I would shoot this video because it's a very interesting distinction in Chinese medicine, food versus medical grade, and a very important distinction in daily life because if you're ill, the only thing that matters is the healing of that illness, right? That's, that's the number one thing. So we have to be realistic about what works. All right, you guys, so that's all I have for you today. Uh, again, I have a free download below this video, which is five daily rituals that can help you add years to your life potentially with Chinese medicine. And if you'd like to become a patient of mine locally or online via telemedicine, you can look up the info on my private practice and clinic, the link right below this video to get my phone number and my contact info.